Welcome to Greater KPN Highlights, a new series in partnership with the Greater KPN Chamber of Commerce and ICAM. In this series, we're going to spotlight many businesses across the Greater KPN region. In this first episode, we're going to feature KPN Cannabis, KPN Botanicals, and True North Ale Company. My name is Olivia Prezodes. I'll be your host. Welcome to the show. Today, we are with Spencer Cocker, CEO and co-founder of KPN Botanicals and KPN Cannabis. Hello. Hi, great to be here. Welcome. Yes, happy to have you here. So let's just kick it off and we'd love to hear more about your businesses. Sure. So we started uh, KPN Botanicals about four years ago now uh, with the goal towards really educating the community about cannabis and it because we had planned to open up a cannabis shop selling retail and medical cannabis also. And so the idea was to get the botanical store open, to get customers aware and more comfortable with the idea and benefits that cannabis can, and, and CBD products specifically can provide. And so, yeah, we were very excited to find this location and do the rebuild and, and really introduce it to a great community that we love. And I feel like CBD and cannabis has just grown, um, you know, very popular as a way to um, you know, treat anxiety and depression and, and various um, various uh, things. Could you talk a little bit about oh, that? Absolutely. Well, so it's interesting because people, many people don't realize that cannabis in, in products themselves have only been illegal for 70 years. Actually, they were used by human beings for about 4,000 years. And so it's only been a very short period of time where that product was taken away from the human race to actually use as medicine or, or as products to help relieve issues that they may have. Of all of the towns and cities in Massachusetts, what made you choose Ipswich and Rally to open your businesses? I mean, one of the things that I did for business is I traveled the country and, you know, a lot of places in North America to do business. And I always felt it was important when I came home that I felt like I was connected. And in a big town, you can't. In a small community, you can't. So it's almost like once I hit the Ipswich border, I was like, ah, a whole sense of relief in just being home and being home. And I think small communities, especially this town, really provides that. It definitely does. Yes. And I can feel your passion exuding from you. Um, what is your experience with, with customers? And do you see the same customers day in and day out or? Yeah, we do. We, I mean, we, we have some regulars and we have people that either have short term issues or short term you know, needs, and that'll be more of a short term relationship. But our whole goal is to really, to, to educate and then help the community provide them with an option. Because none of these products are gonna solve everyone's problems or, or help them in every way. We really see us as being one tool in a toolbox for health and wellness. And whether they're doing CBD products, massage, chiropractic, medical doctors, it's a combination of all of those things when you put those together that you really have the opportunity to really enhance somebody's ability to deal with issues that everybody has to deal with. And I think so the more we can recognize that and really try to help educate even those other health providers, which we do work at, lets us be part of a team. And whether it's reaching out to a medical doctor, we'll do that as well, because I think all of those things, when you have a challenge in your life, you feel alone. When you have people to go to and talk to and get perspectives, it just gives you a sense of hope and opportunity to maybe have an opportunity to solve those problems. And we try to be part of that solution. Very nice. And so you've talked about um, education of, of cannabis and CBD, and you have a great team here. Thank and you. Would, would you say that Cape Ann uh, Botanicals and Cape Ann Cannabis is a family business with uh, um, Kurt? Yes, yeah, yes. and, and then certainly Carl is my stepdaughter. I mean, we've got other people who's our general manager, but really most of the people that, we, that work with us either have become close friends or were friends before and have a lot of the same common goals. We have a massage therapist that works for us. We have other people that are in the industry, you know, in the health industry that work with us as well. So, or they have a passion for it, or they have a, a family member who they watch suffer and, and have to suffer and not have a place to go and get help. So I think we really try to hire passionate and work with passionate people because it's a passionate business. I mean, we had a, you know, we had a cancer patient come in the store and literally when the woman left, she was terminal. The whole store is crying. I mean, I was I was crying, and it, because it really hits home. 
And, and I've said to the team, it's like, you know, this is why we're here. This is, I mean, you know, certainly running a business, you have to, you know, provide for everybody and have funds to do all that. But ultimately, that's the secondary thing. If we can do all those other things and really try to help one, two, five, ten people, kids, adults, seniors, it really, it's what everybody we try to bring in is about. We really do. And, and I think the staff exudes that. I really do. I appreciate you saying what you said. <laughs> yes, yeah. And um, so talking about your businesses as a whole, what makes KBN Botanicals and KBN Cannabis stand out against your competitors? I would say, you know, it's a, a lifetime of experience that I've brought, but it's also the experiences that our team has brought into play. And I think the way that we've developed our store format, the way that we've really brought the team together and really spent time educating everyone in the business. Really, you know, Kurt's a registered nurse and talks to customers, but what people don't see is Kurt's a registered nurse and spends a tremendous amount of time educating our staff. And I think so our educated staff and the ability for a customer to walk into a store, you know, literally when the doors are unlocked and get a professional person who understands what they don't know and what they do know and knows where to suggest they get further information rather than make something up or just say something off the cuff I think is critical. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize if they're taking two or three medications that they need to really recognize that before they consume alcohol, before they do, right. use cannabis, before they use CBD. So to have somebody actually mention that to them as opposed to say what do you want, here you go, I think it's critical because we all have a responsibility to make sure that we don't endanger or put our human, our, our, other humans in a position where they can have a problem if you can help it. So we really spend a lot of time with our team talking about those things and not that there's usually major issues but if you have high blood pressure you want to know that. You want to have somebody mention it because people just don't know. And and, 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 and so that's really very important to us and I think that that's our probably our core thing and while people say they care about the community I think we try to demonstrate that and I think you know, it's easy to put a flag on, it's easy to put a sticker on a door, but really what are your core things that you do as a business? And it's what you do every day and what people care about every day that make the difference. And that's what we try, we try because it's talk the talk, we try to walk the walk. That's a great answer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, you have so many products here and I believe you curate the products that you sell. That's correct, we're very selective. Um, could you talk a little bit about um, your signature products or... or yeah, I guess I could. I mean, we've got, the, you know, we literally, when we opened the doors, I think we had 400 or 500 products to choose from. I think we ended up choosing less than 100 out of that. And we virtually tested everything that we have. I don't mean send it to a lab because they come with lab specs so you can see that. We literally had staff or people try the products, compare them with other things, and see if they really made a difference. The challenge is with the cannabis and the CBD business is that there's not a lot of rules and regulations on what you can say. It's more like a supplement CBD specifically. So for us, when we selected products, we found a company called Flora Sophia out, out in uh, Oregon. Great company, great owner, very dedicated. Again, similar mission to ours, did everything he could. He actually sends Kurt patients from all over the country. So we have patients from all over the country that Kurt helps. Also. Very so nice. So it's moved pretty quickly. It's yes, pretty crazy. Yeah, and it's, it's quite um, the industry to get in. There's a lot of red tape and regulations needing to, to follow. So I guess with your years of experience um, as a business owner, what advice would you give to, um, to small business owners? Well, I would say, with, you know, I've actually consulted for hundreds of businesses as well. Part of what I did is I manufacturing business, I have a consulting business. And so when you look at any time you're having a business, everyone gets excited. I did. You know, I, I've often said if I knew what I knew before I started the business, I don't know if I would have started it. And you've heard other people say that before. That's a common phrase. And the reality is, is that it's, you know, success is still all about effort and energy. And I think you certainly, you know, you don't want to do something that doesn't make any sense. So what does sense mean? Well, what are you trying to achieve? So I think understanding what your personal goals are, understanding what the requirements are to, to operate your business, whether it's rules, regulations, taxes, you know, rent, staffing, all of those things are critical in, in success of a business. And if you let one thing fail, or one thing, I, I actually used to do a grading system where I would grade five or six things out of business, and I, would, and I taught courses on this. If you have two nines and three twos, you're not in too good a shape. You're much better off with three fives or six fives, because you have to recognize those things that you might not be good at. And a lot of times I see entrepreneurs basically try to do everything themselves. 
And so I recommend that you get an advisory board. Really, it's so critical. It could be a friend, it could be somebody who has some expertise in something that has more expertise than you that's not going to let you make dumb mistakes because the issues that I've made have been, over my 40 years in business has been dumb mistakes. It's like, uh, I thought I'd, I didn't even think about that because you get so wrapped up in, in knowing what you know and being excited about you know that you diminish what you don't know because you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so you need somebody to be able to go, didn't you think about that? And you need to go, yeah. no. <laughs> and so being honest with yourself about what you don't know mm -hmm. and seeking help where you need it is critical. And the, you know, there's the, the chamber offers that because you've got people, you can, whether it's an attorney or an accountant, you've got people in the chamber you can talk to, get some insight and really help develop those skills or at least know you have a go-to person for those things. And I just think it's critical if you don't. I mean, you yeah. can really, I've seen businesses succeed and then and one of the phrases they used to say is that they're out of business, they just don't know it yet. Because if your financials are not right, if you got tax, all of those things in the back and just knock you down. And you can mm -hmm. be the best, hardest working person in the world and you just don't see those landmines. And you get, um, that's it. So it's just try to be as yeah. aware as you can and don't yeah. be afraid to ask professionals. Yeah. What do you value most about your chamber membership, and what has your experience been of a member of the Greater KPM Chamber? Well, it's a little bit what I talked about, that you basically got other business professionals that you can talk to on a, on a, on a casual basis, get some insight, and, 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 and have that help you as a business. So, you know, again, the better the chamber does, the better the community does, the, more easy, the easier it is to be successful because it is all working. The hardest thing for a business owner in today's world is getting customers into the door. Well, the chamber helps do that. You're a voice. You're a voice for us, whether it's the government or whether it's the local communities. For us, where a lot of times business owners don't have the time. They know there's a problem, but oh yeah, I need to go down and talk to them. Maybe they can call the chamber and you help. So that it's an awesome assist. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, we've so valued our partnership working with you and your whole team. Um, and do you, are there any businesses in Ipswich or the greater Cape Ann region that you're inspired by? Well, you know, it's funny. I met True North right before that. I mean, I knew them before they started, and they've just done an amazing job of getting started, getting set up, having a good plan, and executing it. That's one end. And then you look at somebody like Zoomies, right, who is just, you know, an awesome business, community-driven, cares about the community deeply and isn't trying to be a big business. You know what I'm saying? So it's two different people with two different goals, but both, I think, succeeding admirably with a lot of conscience and a lot of caring in their, in their souls. And it shows through, and I really love that about businesses, smaller businesses. Well, thank you so much, Spencer. Right. And don't go away, because we're about to pop over to Cape Ann Cannabis in Raleigh. Yeah, looking forward to it. Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We are now in Rowley at Cape Ann Cannabis. Here we are. So, Spencer, what is the main difference between Cape Ann Botanicals and Cape Ann Cannabis? So there's a, a couple of differences. One, you can't come in the shop unless you're 21 or older. In the botanical store, you can come in, you can bring your kids with you, you can bring your, you know, anybody you want, or here you can. You have to have a valid ID, state issued ID, or similar ID. And, uh, and from an entrance standpoint, that's the difference. Beyond that, products are completely different. We have a huge selection of products in here. I think we have the largest selection of products, if not in Boston, certainly on the North Shore. And uh, we really work hard at having, uh, again, very similar, curated, although we don't test everything we bring in, we try to, but we do read the research and we do look at the testing that they provide for us. Uh, beyond that, we basically we have a great staff here. And what's really different about this store is that not only in the types of products that we have, the selection of products, but the level of intoxication you can get from these products. Because again, here we, we might have cancer patients that come in and they're looking really to, to replace their opioids with cannabis. And that's one of the things that we really try to make sure that we have in the store all the time, because that's a real need. And it provides a good alternative to opioids. And then beyond that, we have things where people just they want to, they have a sore foot or they have a sore elbow. They, there's bombs and there's pictures and there's edibles and there's smokables. So we really have a big selection. And the other biggest thing is really this staff here, while, we have, while the nurse works at both stations, remote stores, the staff here has really been educated by the nurse on cannabis products specifically. So the whole staff really has a very, very good indication on helping customers decide what might be best for them. And so the education level here, again, for specifically cannabis, the selection of products, 
And really our pricing is just awesome beyond that. So that's what we try to do. We really appreciate the community support and your support. And thanks for coming in. Thank you so much, Spencer. This has been an amazing interview. We've truly enjoyed learning more about both sides of your businesses. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks. And we will see you over at True North Dale. We are here today at True North Ale Company, and right across from me we have Gary Rogers of True North Ale Company. Uh, Chi and your role? Well, uh, founder, along with my son Jake, and uh, I've got the title of Chief of Business Operations. Very nice. That's a pretty big position. <laughs> Gave myself a good title. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's just kick it off and tell us about uh, the brewery. Sure. Well, I mentioned my son, Jake. We uh, opened the business in 2017, November 2017. And it, it's a brewery. It's a production brewery and a tap room as well. So we make the beer. We distribute the beer throughout parts of New England. And we also sell it here on premise uh, in our tap room and on our patio. So the intention of the business, however, was not just to make beer but it was to have here a community gathering place. And we've really done a great job of that with the team that we have and the success that we've had in bringing people in from the community, whether it's just someone stopping in uh, with their friends or an event, you know, a fundraiser or some other community activity. So uh, that was what Jake and I wanted to accomplish and it's really working well. So what made you want to open a brewery in Ipswich? <laughs> Well, opening a brewery was my son's fault. That's the first part. Uh, he had gotten out of college and went into the brewing industry. And he was working at a brewery and was getting some great experience. But he'd say things to me like, uh, they should be doing this, they could do this better. And I'd say, well, you know, you're a smart kid. Why don't you open your own place? And it took him a while, and he was gaining great experience all the time. But uh, one day he called me and he said, I'm ready. I'm ready to open a brewery, but one condition you've got to do it with me. And I was happily retired. And it took me about a nanosecond to say, yeah, let's go. So uh, it, having, opening the brewery was, was really his idea because I prodded him. Uh, opening in Ipswich, again, his idea. He's been living here since 2012. And initially he was renting and then he bought a house uh, and then he knocked it down and he built a new one, uh, but uh, loves the community. And I've really come to love the community. The community spirit in Ipswich is just tremendous. And, uh, and we really appreciate the support that they give us. Excellent. Um, so the community of Ipswich is just very welcoming and open. How have, what are some of your um, inspirations of businesses in Ipswich? Uh, well, in Ipswich, we, we've got some great restaurants in Ipswich. The, uh, uh, you know, we engaged with the uh, restaurant owners you know, right from the start in Ipswich, and I, I think we're in every restaurant in Ipswich. Uh, what we told them was, we're not a restaurant. We don't want to compete with you. We want to partner with you. And the restaurant owners took that to heart and uh, have cooperated with us. What we do uh, in our tap room, we have a list of all the restaurants, either the ones that deliver, we have that category, so that people who are here, because you can bring your own food here. We don't do restaurant and we do pretzels that's the extent of ours but uh, if you do want food and beer and food go together very well then uh, you can order it and have it delivered you can go and pick it up or when it's time to go go to one of the restaurants and uh, enjoy a nice dinner and maybe have a, another one of our beers um, so you talked a little bit about the family end of True North Ale mm -hmm. Company. Could you talk a little bit more about how it is working with your family and also tell us a little bit about the team here? Sure. So uh, my wife, Jill, thought she was going to avoid working here. She said that she, <laughs> so, so that's your thing. She said, you and Jake are doing that. Well, it didn't work, didn't last long. So uh, she's been working here full time. Uh, she's responsible for our web page. She does a lot of the work in the tap room with our tap room managers. When we opened, I reached out to a very good friend of mine, a fraternity brother from, you know, 
back 100 years ago when I was in college, and uh, he joined us as CFO, and he's been with us for five years, uh, just retired again. And uh, our new CFO, uh, also named Jill, which gets confusing, uh, uh, just joined us back a few months. Uh, Jake had a very good friend who he brewed with and worked with at, uh, uh, at his prior job, uh, Seth Barnum. Seth's our head brewer. So family, friends, the core group is, is very tight that way. So, uh, you know, Joe Newman, Alex Folsom, who run the tap room and all the events that we do, just do a phenomenal job. All our guys in production, I think we got some video of them uh, working on the canning line, working with, uh, with Seth and Jake. They just do a tremendous job there. So uh, that's, uh, that's our tap room staff. You definitely have a wonderful team here, I know from personal experience. Um, and we're sitting here today in your event space. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit about this space and some of the events that you do? And you know, if someone wanted to book an event here, what that entails? Sure. So we, uh, we outfitted this in 2019. And the, one of the very first events, FX was in the spring. So we had a couple of Boston Marathon fundraisers that were in here. Uh, followed by one of the bigger events that we did pre-pandemic, uh, and that was the Hamilton Wenham Ed Fund. They came in and they set up five ping pong tables. They had a 32-team ladder of elimination. Uh, there were 135 people here that night just enjoying themselves, and, and they raised a lot of money for the school system. So uh, those community-type events that we can do are, you know, we, we look forward to those all the time. Yeah. Well, you definitely have a lot of great things going on here. What would you say is your biggest success to date? Well, the biggest success is the beer that we've brewed and won awards for. I mean, that, people come here because the beer is tremendous, and they get to engage with friends over a great beer. But when we were just five or six months old, we put our beer into competition for the first time. And it happened to coincide with the biggest competition in the world of brewing, you know, sort of the Olympics of brewing. Uh, in this case, 2018, in the spring of 2018, there were 8,400 beers judged from 2,600 breweries from 66 countries, something like that. And we won the gold award for our Belgian blonde, for Vinciane. And we were just blown away. The process of making a beer is, there are only four, other than when you put in fruit or something like that, uh, there are only four ingredients in beer. And you know, you've got malt, and you've got hops, yeast, and water. And starting with that as a base, you can go in many different directions. So uh, when we are in the, in the brew house there, it, uh, you know, we, we take those four elements, we put it together, and after four or five hours of work, you've got beer that is, that is in a tank and starting to ferment. Uh, it may take two or three weeks before we can package it, as we saw uh, earlier today, uh, or if it's a lager beer, it may take five or six weeks before it's ready to package, and you know, the, that type of yeast is different. But uh, the, uh, the choice of what we're brewing is really based partly on what the, the demand is out there in the market and partly on what Seth and his team are, uh, are looking to introduce people to. People will say, well, I've never had a beer like that. And it opens their eyes to what, you know, what the possibilities are and the range of beers that they could have. You asked about naming a beer? That's the toughest part. It I really think, is. Yeah. It, uh, and, putting, and, and designing a label mm -hmm. to put on the can. It's, uh, you know, we take pride in the labels that we have. We come up with some creative names, but I tell you, it's tough each time. And uh, it's a team effort. The production people who are with the beer from its inception right through the process, they're usually the ones that can come up with a pretty good, pretty good name for the beer. Every once in a while, we're stuck and we throw it open to all the taproom people. And uh, it's fun because I'll send out an email mm -hmm. and saying, hey, we need a name for this beer. Here's the description, here's what it's all about. And the creativity just starts flowing and the emails are coming back and, and then we'll sort of you know, judge them and see what people think and come up with something. So it's a, it's a fun and creative process all the time. 
and a few beers help too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Well, it's great to hear the collaboration, you know, yeah. between everyone here. Um, and so, tell me about the name of uh, of the business yep. and how that came. Well, uh, again, that's my son's doing. So Jake. Jake was adamant that we were going to have uh, a name for the business that uh, has some, some substance to it and some gravitas. Um, he didn't want anything that was a, a pun or a, a, you know, a dog. Or <laughs> so uh, he, uh, he thought about it and there were three reasons why the name True North Ales came about and is supported so well. Um, the true part mm -hmm. that's the integrity of the business that we were wanting to build and i think we've been successful in doing that and having true integrity to it well we're on the north shore so the north part's yep. easy we're in the northern part of the country the northern part of new england uh, so north came in true north with the logo and the uh, uh, offset there of the needle mm -hmm. we're Ipswich is about 12 degrees uh, off on that uh, uh, correction from True North. We cheated a little bit. The, the, the needle always goes up, right? <laughs> we just pushed the needle over and said, uh, you know, True North, just because just it looks stylized, it looks better. Spoken about uh, your success, the team, the early beginnings, what's next? Wow. <laughs> I tell you, COVID was difficult. And the things that we were thinking about and planning, and it, it sort of took a back seat for a while. Now we're just trying to get back on track. Uh, I look at a lot of the, our uh, partners, our accounts who have rest, our restaurants and how they suffered as, uh, as we did. At least we had the outlet of going to stores. Mm -hmm. But when the restaurants were closed and the restrictions were in place, our tap room suffered for sure, but we were still able to put beer out on the store shelves. Um, you know, I, I, the plan that we have right now is a little bit nearer term than what maybe we were thinking of a couple of years ago, and that is to really get back on track. Mm -hmm. So this is the year, I think. It wasn't last year. Remember, we were still under restrictions yeah. last year through Memorial Day. And then we thought we were out of it and, you know, Omicron hit and took uh, the wind out of our sails for the Christmas season. And it's, uh, you know, it's been rocky. So, you know, the, the, the focus right now is really doing it well right now and then seeing how we can do. Well, we definitely wish you the best of luck. And Thank I feel you. like all you can do is go up uh, from here. So we're looking forward to see all that's in store for you. Um, could you please tell the viewers where they can learn more about you, sure. uh, your Instagram website? Thanks, Olivia. The, uh, so please follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook. Uh, social media is the way that businesses like us can do our marketing. We don't have a marketing budget, uh, small business, but I'll tell you, social media can be very, very uh, successful for us and compelling for folks like you who uh, are looking for information. Our website, which I mentioned earlier that Jill is responsible for, has a lot of information. It has information on the brewing process, on the company, on the uh, events, uh, the things that we're doing, the beers that we have. So. Uh, you know, I urge you to go to our website and uh, spend a little time there. It's uh, educational and it's, uh, it's certainly useful. The, uh, but social media, we have fun with it. And uh, there are things that we can do there that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's worth it. So if you're following us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, we try to do our best. So thanks. Well, thank you so much for your time, Gary. It was wonderful to learn more about your business. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, Olivia.